During the Human Covenant War, the UNSC faced a more numerous and better armed enemy. Humanity struggled against the Covenant's onslaught, winning only a few battles. Victories were only ever achieved through incredible strength of will and sound military tactics. Even on the rare occasions when the UNSC had a large numerical advantage, the strength of Covenant warships could not be underestimated. At the Second Battle of Harvest, 40 UNSC vessels under the command of legendary Vice Admiral Preston Cole only barely managed to take down a single Covenant cruiser, which destroyed 13 ships in retaliation. As the war progressed, it was generally understood that a ratio of three ships to one was needed for a UNSC victory. With all that in mind, today we'll be looking specifically at five aspects of UNSC space warfare. The topics range from the uses of technology to general military doctrine to specific tactics. Before we get into the content, however, I would like to say thank you to Audible for sponsoring today's video. If you'd like to support the channel for free, go to audibletrial.com slash Eckhart's Ladder. There, you can get a free month of Audible, including one audiobook. I highly recommend Thrawn Alliances, which just dropped a couple of days ago, but there are also many other Halo and Star Wars books on the service. Feel free to message me on Twitter if you need a recommendation for your free audiobook. The first aspect of space combat that I'd like to discuss is the UNSC's use of MAC rounds. Magnetic accelerator cannons, otherwise known as MACs, were the main anti-capital ship weapon used by the UNSC. They accelerated large slugs to extremely fast speeds, inflicting incredible damage. MACs were scaled up or down depending on the size of the ship they were mounted to. Smaller ships, which could not hope to damage larger Covenant vessels on their own, would often use wolf pack tactics, which saw groups of vessels hit a single target with a coordinated MAC barrage before retreating. The use of magnetic accelerator cannons required a lot of thought, and for this reason, AI were often used to coordinate ships during battle. Max could either be fired at full power, which would require significant charging time, or at lower power, which required more projectiles to be fired but saw a drop in energy output. So here's where the strategy comes in. A fully shielded Covenant ship could likely survive a single MAC round. The UNSC was thus most successful when multiple vessels coordinated their efforts, with one set taking down the shield and the other destroying the enemy itself. Often Max would also be used to deplete a shield, while secondary weapons like Archer missiles or Shiva bombs would inflict hull damage. I've gone over this before in my description of Halo weapons which I'll link in the upper right hand corner. Sometimes over coordinated MAC barrages would result in dead time, where no UNSC ships could fire while waiting for their MACs to cycle. Obviously this left the ships extra vulnerable to attack. During the fall of Reach, orbital refit stations were used to absorb Covenant munitions as the UNSC weapons recharged. This was one way to help protect against that dead zone. A final thing to mention here is UNSC orbital weapons platforms. ODPs were fitted with extremely powerful MACs, which could destroy even the most powerful Covenant cruisers in a single shot. The presence of these assets would seriously alter UNSC battle strategy, as MACs themselves are often sufficient to turn away attacks so long as they are protected, especially from smaller craft. By 2552, Earth was guarded by over 300 weapons platforms, and the Covenant's main attack strategy was to pierce a hole in the defense array and then send ships through. Any Covenant commander has to be very aware of the kill zone of a UNSC defense grid, lest they suffer destruction through a single shot. Notably, ODPs also used ground-based generators, representing a clear vulnerability, especially if covert forces are in play. The next topic of discussion is starfighters. Unlike Star Wars, where starfighters are often the be-all, end-all, of space engagement, capital ships, due to their much more powerful weapons, are typically the stars of Halo naval battles. That being said, small ships of course have their use, they often escort larger ships or protect transports during boarding actions or retreats. The most common UNSC fighter was the longsword and its various permutations. Typically longswords would not be used against fully shielded Covenant vessels, but the fighters were armed with Shivan nuclear weapons which could destroy a crippled or unshielded ship. One interesting but hard to pull off technique is the firing of a nuclear missile behind Covenant shields. The shields would essentially hold the blast in, causing catastrophic damage to the shielded ship. As mentioned, this is tough to pull off, however Covenant ships do lower portions of their shields to fire certain weapons, providing a small area of vulnerability. This indirectly brings us to our next topic, the use of AI. One area where the UNSC had advantage over their Covenant enemies was the sophistication and prominence of human AI. I'm going to keep the discussion here pretty short, but basically there are three forms of AI, two which are more prominent, smart AI and dumb AI. 
Smart AI are created by mapping the neural pathways of real human brains, while dumb AI are created by traditional programming techniques. Don't let the name fool you, however. Dumb AI are still incredible assets and can outperform even the best traditional machines or humans in their areas of expertise. The main difference is that smart AI have an unlimited ability to grow and learn, though because of rampancy also have a limited life cycle. Both smart and dumb AI could be used during warfare. Dumb AI specifically could be created to manage a specific or several specific aspects of a ship, while smart AI could probably perform all tasks needed, at least if they had some experience doing so, from coordinating multiple forces, to firing weapons, to guiding courses, to piloting a ship itself. As an example, during the attack on Earth, Cortana took control of the weapon system of the orbital weapons platform Cairo Station. AI could even be used to pilot starfighters or to take control of launch munitions. The next point I'd like to discuss is the use of boarding action and the destruction of large targets. Both the UNSC and the Covenant use boarding as a means to attack and capture enemy capital ships, and indeed, a large portion of UNSC boarding strategy involves repelling invaders. However, the UNSC has also found success taking down large targets through Spartan or Marine strike teams. Spartans especially were a very effective tool for boarding, they were extremely deadly in close combat, could take down practically any enemy in front of them while avoiding being overwhelmed, and could also survive vacuum within their armor. Notably, Spartan strike teams were responsible for the destruction of the unyielding Hierophant and its accompanying fleet, the massive Covenant supercarrier, the Long Knight of Solace, a Covenant assault carrier at the Battle of Earth, the Mantle's Approach, and surely countless other ships. Boarding teams could be inserted through special drop ships, single person vehicles, or just by extravehicular activity. Regardless, the goal was the same, to bring the UNSC's strength at ground-based warfare to space. The last point I'd like to discuss is the changes in UNSC space warfare after the end of the Human Covenant War. Post-war, the UNSC began a remilitarization program, not only building new ships, but focusing on reverse engineering Covenant and Forerunner technology. This allowed, for the first time ever, for the UNSC to add shielding to their capital ships. The UNSC also saw massive increases in both slip space speed and accuracy. For the first time, UNSC ships could reliably perform micro in-system jumps, which which of course opened up many new tactical avenues. With the creation of the UNSC Infinity, as well as several new cruiser and frigate types, the UNSC surpassed the Covenant as the dominant of the two spacefaring civilizations. And that has been a basic overview of UNSC space tactics. There's a whole lot I could have talked about here, I didn't even mention the UNSC's use of nuclear weapons, or some of the famous individual maneuvers like the Keys Loop, but I've linked a Halo playlist if you want more, I highly recommend you check it out, especially my video on capital ship weapons. Thanks once again to Audible for sponsoring today's video. If you want to help the channel out, go to audibletrial.com slash Eckhart's Ladder and listen to one of the many Star Wars or Halo audiobooks, or just something of your own choosing. Also, thank you to you guys for checking out this video. Make sure you let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next. Until next time, may the Force be with you.